Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, another little watercolor tutorial. Just having some fun with watercolor in my little watercolor book that uh, I built out of scraps. I have a video on how I put a smaller version of this together, but it's a great um, little book, inexpensive because it's just using cheapy watercolor paper and just playing with some experiments. Some more successful than others, um, having lots of fun uh, playing with textures and paper. So I do want to do a tutorial on this style, which was a lot of fun to play with. Um, but today we're going to play with this idea, which is similar to that one, um, but using more graphic type patterns. Uh, so again, when you're designing something like this, it's all about playing with balance, color, textures, and uh, different from the previous videos I have done, uh, we're going to add some paper to our watercolor paper. So let's uh, play with that. So I have, again, a couple of yucky scraps of watercolor paper. They're stained and kind of dirty and pre-sketched and all that. So uh, this is a great kind of paper to stick other paper to. So um, this is a cheapy watercolor paper. It's not... Uh, just come, come I think it's from the dollar store maybe or a scrap I don't know where it came from because it's just a scrap and I have taken a, another piece of paper and glued it down so the paper I've been choosing to play with is this really fun paper that I got out of a what would it be called like a survey book um, so it's got some pages have this lettering on it and other pages have these maps and then other pages have like water systems. So I think they're really fun because the, the paper itself offers more interest and also more textures. And what's really nice about this specific piece of paper, what draws me to it is the balance of positive and negative space on the paper already. And then it's got this decorative frame element. Um, you can use book pages, you can use whatever paper you're drawn to. And I mean, you can use the plain paper if you want. So what makes this a little bit different is that this is obviously not watercolor paper that we'll be painting on. This is just standard copy paper. Um, so it's not designed to absorb water the way that watercolor is. I think we'll use this one too. Uh, so you have to kind of be careful when you're applying your water color paint because you don't want um, you don't want to ruin the paper and again it's a, experimental so sometimes you're gonna ruin a paper maybe it peels off and then it's just another texture so it really is just about having some fun with different mediums and experimentation which is what this channel is all about just trying new things new mediums um, I try to um, show you guys different mediums that you can use and how you can use them together. A lot of them are experimental for me as well. Uh, things I haven't used before and uh, just having fun with it. So what I'm using here is a tacky glue quick dry. It's the only glue I have right now. It's a bit on the wet side for this project, but it works. And uh, like I said, this is just having fun and experimental. So I do want to make sure I get it right to my edges. I want to try and getting, avoid getting glue on the front of this paper because glue will act as a repellent to the, to the watercolor, which could also be really fun to play with. You know, putting dabs of pockets of glue where the watercolor won't absorb. Another way of playing with stuff. I mean, that's what it's all about, just experimenting. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do here. I think we will, because I don't have um, editing, I, things have to dry before we can sketch on them. So I'm just trying to think, should I pre-sketch something and paint one? Let's do that. That way we have time to play with things. So uh, what should we sketch on this side? This one I think I'm just going to play with a watercolor then sketch. So this one, let's just do some, let's just do some leaves to start. I'm using, sorry, I'm using my Uniball here. I use it in all my videos. It's an archival waterproof ink. And when I go to add my watercolor, 
it's not going to run on me. And I'm literally just sketching this out of my head. So sketch whatever you like. You can use um, things like stamps. And just play with some leaves here. Probably do the same leaf on this side just to see how different it looks with different background papers. So this is a very busy paper. And we'll see how what the results are of that. So I'm just sketching out some leaves, putting some detail in. So we'll come back and draw on this again. This paper will take a little longer to dry because it is definitely more porous in the sense that it is not a watercolor paper. I'm just having fun here. It's a really good way to loosen up before you get into a serious project. I'm making little, little works of art here. It's my favorite thing to do. You can see I'm, I'm just sketching. I'm not drawing perfect bits and pieces of leaves. I'm just having fun. So I'm looking at my overall composition here, and I think I want to put another one coming up. Maybe even going halfway off the page here. Feeling my way out and maybe something over here so we'll continue the branch maybe do a curved leaf here am I in frame <laughs> so something curved like this and then here's the other side of the leaf so it might be a little hard to see because the background paper is so busy Giving a little wiggle to imply that the leaf has kind of got this cut edge. Okay, and then maybe some berries or something, some texture in here. So I'm just going to squiggle some lines. I probably should have started painting that first now that I think about it. So let's do that actually before I continue because we do want this to dry. So, uh, where's my watercolor brushes? There's one, not the best shape, but it'll do. So I've got my water, I'll bring my palette in. These are my uh, Mele Yang paints that I've been playing with, having a lot of fun with. Um, so I'm just gonna grab some colors that appeal to me. So I'm gonna throw some green in here. And you've seen me watercolor before, where it's all about just throwing the color down. I'm choosing a palette that I like. It's very loose. So you can see things will start to dry very quickly on this paper. It absorbs right in. So you're going to get a different look than when you would use, say, um, a kind of, what's the word I'm thinking of? Jeez, oh, watercolor paper. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate on picking my color and talking at the same time. That's a pretty blue. So let's pull out my menu here. And I think that would be Prussian blue. Mm. Yeah, Prussian blue. I'll just play. So for some reason, I'm always drawn to the blues and browns. So don't be surprised if I end up using that color palette again. It's just my go-to. I don't generally use purples. I'm not drawn to that color, but that can change, you know. In a few years, I start creating journals still, and, and suddenly they'll all be purple. <laughs> and this green is olive green, I believe. Yep, olive green. Just a beautiful green. It's very earthy. It's one of my favorites. All right, and of course, maybe a little bit of this orange just for a contrast against the blue. Throw that orange in, that's quite pretty. Just 
And I'm not using tons of pigment here because again, I don't want to distort the paper too much. If I overdo it with the water, I'll reabsorb with the uh, paper towel. And intensify a few of these spots. in elsewhere. Go back to my Prussian blue. And this color of course will dry lighter on paper, on the paper, than it looks when it's wet. So I don't want to overdo it because I do want it to dry a bit. I'm going to put in just a touch of burnt sienna, or raw sienna, sorry it's always been my go-to color. I just find it's really just warms up everything. And it goes against these blues so beautifully. It goes against any color really lovely actually. There. So we'll let that dry a little while we continue drawing on the other side. Hopefully I'm still in frame here, so I'm going to put some little seeds here. You could do berries, you could do a bird, you could do whatever you like. And I'm just scribbling, I'm not doing anything specific, I'm doing an applied texture. Maybe put some right in the middle. I love experimenting with watercolor. I just love the nature of it, how it settles, how it pools, how it separates. It's just, it's, it makes things so organic looking to me. And if you choose the right color combinations, it, there's a real wow factor to it. So when it, it gave me the opportunity to, to scribble and add sketches on top, I've now really fallen in love with watercolor. And so I'm going to look at my overall composition here and, and look at my positive space, which is the sketch, against the negative space, which is the paper. And you can see there's a lot of texture in this paper. So I know that I'm going to need to really pop something here. So I'm going to, let's use this, use some circles for this one. And I'm going to just put them in where I want them. They're not going to be perfect circles because my cup is on a funny angle to the paper. Um, and I just kind of, again, want to work with the balance. So I'm going to put one up here because I'm going to play with these circles after, maybe, maybe a little before. So we can watercolor after as well. I usually like to draw after I've watercolored, but for video's sake, I'm going to do both because I need it to dry. So I'm looking at the composition, I'm feeling, will it be balanced? Do I want to pop something more than something else? I think I'm gonna put another circle inside this circle. Doesn't mean I can't add things later when I've watercolored it. Oops, I missed the bottom of that circle. Make sure they line it up a bit. And um, I can play with it more when I've watercolored. All right, so let's just add some color to this guy. And then we'll go from there. Because hopefully this guy will be, be he's still pretty soaked. <laughs> Maybe we'll draw a little longer on this side. Um... I like to thicken the line on my circle. Just kind of fill some lines in here. So you can do this either way. You can do it where you're drawing it all in and then adding color. You're putting all your textured elements in first. Or you can do what I did on the other side where you throw the color in and then play. 
There's really no wrong or right. Depends what you want to control more, I guess. So you can, of course, fast forward these parts of me just coloring in circles. <laughs> I do like to play with texture. It's the name of this game. Texture and balance. Something like that. Or maybe this one right in here. There's something really therapeutic about sketching these two. They're uh, relaxing, you know? You don't overthink it. I mean, you can overthink it, but you try not to. And maybe darken this guy. Maybe let me darken the spot of him. You know, kind of give him a border here. And just let your imagination take you wherever you want to go with your patterns. I really like the re end results of most of these. Some of them are, aren't award-winning by any means. <laughs> They're more uh, recycle bin worthy. Um, and then some of them are surprisingly pretty and I really like them. And I learn a little bit of something when I'm do each one. I, I do know that there are days where I cannot draw. My hand is just too tired or I can't seem to, what's the word, function with the pen. Like what I want to put down, my hand is not cooperating. So that's the days I do something else. There are days I, I'm on a roll when I draw and I draw some things I'm really quite proud of. And then there's other days where I just can't do it for the life of me. It's like writer's block for a writer, you know? You know you can do it. You're just not able to do it that day. <laughs> so, just putting a few lines here while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit. I have no, I have no pre-plan just other than using this paper. And this would look really nice on book pages, too. So with the writing or a different language, that would be really cool, too. Because I don't look at it as languages and book pages. I look at it as a form of texture on underneath. I have a messy line here that it doesn't bother me. So I'll leave it for now. I'll maybe do a little bit more. So I'm just getting there. Do a little bit more down here. So it's going to be a pretty long video. And again, you can fast forward the sketchy, the sketchy part, unless you like watching sketching. something about geometric and organic that I like. So there's a lot of geometric lines in this paper. Straight up and straight across that we can play with later. Pull that element out. Because I'll probably use just a regular Sharpie for that, but I don't want to do that yet because that will bleed with the watercolor. So you do have to kind of think strategically on what it is, what mediums you're going to use and how they react to each other. So it would be kind of fun to try that white glue 
and see what it were it would repel a lot of things. It would repel this pen, probably. I think it would pretty much repel everything. Except maybe ink. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to experiment. <laughs> All right, let's paint here a little bit. I think I'll use the same color scheme just again so we can see the difference with that paper that we've used. So I'm going to throw some of this in. This is that olive green. And I am using a number 10 round watercolor brush. Um, it's a nice tool to use because it can take paint away as well, like that. So it can reabsorb paint. That's called lifting, which is nice. Nice technique. Uh, what blue did we use? Prussian, of course. Yeah, you can leave some white of the paper too. That would be kind of neat. Um, I did buy some Posca pens. So we can add some white in after. I'm not thinking about the overall image when I put this color down. I'm thinking about balance of the color. So uh, now I, I'm I'm not totally ignoring the image. As you can see, I did start with the leaves, but now while I'm putting the blue in, I'm really just playing on, I've got blue here, I've got blue here, I need blue in here. It doesn't have to be as much, but I do need to introduce that blue. Now there are rules you can break when it comes to color balance, and it can be really fun to play with. A lot of abstract artists really break those boundaries. All right, and we use this orange here. What is that orange called? Just in case you wanted to know, it is a cadmium orange. So I'm gonna add that in. And again, just thinking of the balance. Got it here, got it here, maybe over here now. Or maybe just on this side. So if we left just the orange on this side, it looks unbalanced because there it, that that element is missing in in here now. So for me, I like to add it so that it is balanced. But again, there are ways to break that. And then we'll add a tiny little bit of sienna here. So pretty. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit more white space on this one because I'm liking it already. I think I'm going to leave that. Maybe pop the green just a touch more. So you see, I'm gonna lift it, lift it. But you don't wanna, you don't wanna play too much with this paper because again, it is not watercolor paper. So we'll only let you abuse it for so long, and then it will start rejecting, start rejecting the paint and water, and start breaking the fibers in the paper. I'm going to remove just a little bit, just so it dries a little faster for us, so it will go lighter. because there are some pools there that are a little bit too wet. This is damp, but I think we can sketch. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's give it a go. Um, so do I want to do the same? Let's do the same. I said I was going to do the same plant, so we'll do the same plant. I don't, this isn't specific plant by any means, but the same texture in this one, I want in this one. So now I'm just going to start playing with my sketching, almost ignoring the watercolor at this point, and just building up a composition with my plant here. Okay. Put some 
berries right in here. All these little seeds, whatever they are. Okay, and then maybe one this way. Again, not a ton of detail. So my pen is reacting a little different simply because the water, is, the paper's damp. I don't know if you can see that it gets a little thicker lined here because the paper underneath is drawing the ink in and thinner where it's dry. So something to note when you are doing this project. And I hope you do do this project because it is a lot of fun. So we'll do this, and then the leaf coming out this way. And again, contour lines for the leaf. Don't do flat lines because it flattens our image. And even though we're not doing a realistic sketch, we still want we still want it to look like a leaf, have some form. So we'll put one here. Maybe this one can curl, curve on itself. There's the center. Some veining. We could do another one coming behind it. Again, just sketching away. I'm not trying to overthink it too much. Again, I'm looking at my overall balance. I kind of like the sketch up here and uh, maybe a little bit of, a little bit on an, maybe on an angle this time. We'll just keep sketching and see where we go. Put one behind this. I like to put them behind. I find it adds a little bit more interest. I like to curve the leaves. On themselves again a little more interest some smaller leaves some bigger leaves you can do this in pencil first of course if you're a little nervous at drawing but it is kind of nice just to go for it have that confidence and go for it stem here. Maybe we'll put some seeds here. Just some scribbles. We can play with those more after. Okay, we we'll pull the stem right down here and maybe a leaf here. And maybe you have a branch in front of you that you're using as a reference which is great this is just coming out of my head so it doesn't really look like any specific tree to me it's just a wiggly leaf <laughs> again playing with texture okay so I'm pretty happy with that composition I think I think I do want one more coming up to the top here. Just to kind of keep that flow moving. All right, let's use the cup again. So I'm gonna look at my overall composition here, my positive space versus my negative space. Now this can be tricky because at the same time, your positive space is your sketch, but you also have these details in the paper, which you can make part of the positive or part of the negative, if that makes sense. So you can subdue them to the background, or you can really play with them and pull them forward. Um, so we're going to play with that in a minute as well. So I again, I want I introduced the rings here, so I want to introduce the rings on this, just so um, 
the two stay consistent and we can do similar sketches on how we did the paint first and how we did the drawing first. Okay, so that goes right through there too. All right, one ring. I think we'll do another one here. This paper's still a bit damp on the edge. So I have to be careful to whip it. And I don't want to get my head in the video, so I can't fully see where that circle is. Oops. There we go. Um, I think we'll need one down here. Again, thinking of the balance, the overall balance of the composition. And how I'm going to balance these circles. Wow, my circles are getting pretty messy. <laughs> Look at this, it went whoop way down there. <laughs> I kind of like the offset of the three, so I'm going to leave that for now and then we'll start sketching. Start playing with our texture here. So I'm going to pull the detail out of the stem. And then I think what I will do is start playing with these grid lines. So there's some really strong grid line elements right here. So I'm going to start playing with those in the background paper. And then I think I will bulk those up. So the rest of this video is pretty much doodling away. And I kind of doodle, take my time in some spots and move faster in others. So this might be a little bit boring to watch. Totally understand if you need to fast forward me on this. But I want to show you how I build up this negative space into positive elements. So that was just the boring background. Actually, it wasn't that boring because it's got some really cool paper on it. But now I'm bringing it into part of the design element. By adding texture. My paper's still a little damp, so I gotta be careful. I'm just gonna fill in that what was negative space to find my leaf here. Oh, and that's why I love using this watercolor because you can see all this really pretty color combination in these leaves. And it still shines through the background of the, of the texture. So much fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna think overall. I've introduced this texture, so where else do I want it? So I think I'm gonna kind of work on this side of the leaf here a little bit and then decide, do I wanna leave this plain? Do I wanna play with that? And so for me, it's just kind of baby steps of where do I wanna add things? And what I think in my head is gonna look like at the end, it never does. And that's really fun. I love the unpredictability of this type of artwork. You don't know where it's going to take you. You kind of let it lead you. And you can really play with textures. So, I mean, I can skip this space and then go here and leave that blank. Try that and see if we like it. I'll do the same. I'll move it up here and skip this whole space. I'll just put these lines in. So the next video I do with this style will have more of a structured feel to it. So we're going to imply the flower shape with the watercolor and then draw it in and have some fun. So there's all kinds of approaches you can do. So I'm going to leave this. Just work my way down. Okay. 
I'm going to stop at this river line because this line's kind of fun. Just reinforce that line. So this implies a river, I guess, on the um, the uh, survey paper. So you can really play with those elements. You can really take your time and do nice, perfect straight lines. I'm moving kind of fast because of the video. We've got a lot of drawing to do. Normally I would take more of my time to do this. I don't think I would use a ruler. I would just practice with my hand. I kind of like the inconsistency of the space in between. I think that's kind of fun. So I filled in this space. I didn't continue it. This space here, I filled it in. Is there something different? So you can see how I'm turning that negative space into a positive element here. It's now becoming part of the foreground in a way. So maybe we'll go right to this line. Let's see if we like this empty now. I'm just gonna play here. And maybe fill this guy in. Move that blank square. Maybe we'll go horizontal in there. Who knows? We'll see where it takes us. Okay, so that's kind of fun. I think I'll fill in here as well. Right down to that river line. And what this does is it really pops these leaves forward. I don't really need to do much with these leaves now. They're just kind of finished. You could put a little bit more veining in if you want. All right, so let's play with this circle. We could do something fun here. So this water line goes right through. I'm going to cut the circle in half with that water line. Continue it. And by water line, I mean the graphic paper. And then I really like playing with these circles. So I draw big circles, little circles. And then I fill them in. I fill the background in. Semi-circles with pen. So normally I would use this, but because I don't want the video to be too long, I think maybe we'll move to, if I can find it, uh, maybe not. I thought I took it out. Oh, my goodness. I had this one. I thought I had a Sharpie. Oh boy. So this is just a permanent dollar store marker. Now this will bleed, so it, you have to be pretty happy with your watercolor at this point in order to use this and it will bleed in the paper as well so it will expand when you use it so these circles will get a little bit smaller because it, it's absorbing in it's almost easier just to sketch the circles with this pen than to pre-sketch it has a pretty fat nub to it but i didn't want to be all day filling in this section <laughs> so because normally like i said i would use my little pen here to fill that in because i do like the sketchy look but i don't want to bore you all the tears I'm just going to clean the edge here with my little pen. There we 
Oh, that's fun. So now I've introduced a new element, in this case, a new texture. I'm going to include it elsewhere. So where else do I want it? I think I will put it in this circle here. So I've introduced it at the bottom of the page and the top of the page. So there's some balance. And even though we put these dark elements in here, the watercolor is still the star of the show, in my opinion, anyways. Because it has that real beautiful, soft, organic feel against these strong, these strong compositions of texture here. These strong elements. Okay, so I really like these. This is really fun. I think we should add it elsewhere. So I don't know if I want to do it right here, but I think I might add another circle. Maybe in here. So I'm just going to draw it out here. I don't know. I can't really see where I'm going. I've decided to add it in there. I'm going to add some more of this texture. Now what's fun is these, the graphics on this paper is going to shine through in these circles. take this another step further with a white pen and add dots or whatever we want. I mean, you just keep going and going. And I just do these at my desk, relaxed. Just think I'm just going to play here and see what happens. And then you can photocopy the ones you really love. That you, uh, feel you succeeded at and reuse them as papers in your journals or artwork on your wall. Okay, so we've got really strong elements here. So we need to kind of balance the those harsh elements against our softness of our paper. So there's a couple of ways you can do that by introducing some stronger, darker spaces, if that makes sense. Um, so for example, I have this river line that runs through the page. So I might pick up on that and start giving myself a thick black line. So I'm just gonna start building in some more bolder pattern here to offset the strong nature. Because when you look at this right now, you're drawn right to these three spots. But we want to look at the whole image. So we have to, again, balance it out so that it's harmonious with some fun interest. Something that draws the viewer in to want to look closer at what it is we've done. So in this case, I'm using the paper itself. I can even decide to go right through the leaf if I want to, but we're, and I might do that, but right now I'm just gonna simplify by following this river shape and then kind of going from there what I want to add. And it's just so much fun to draw on these. like this and then there's a I can 
kind of an implied line here where my brain visually connects this line and so I'm going to connect it further down and I'm just going to sketch it in. There's no river line there, but I'm going to give myself permission to just draw a line right in there. You can also bump up this frame, which would be really fun. You can fill this all in if you wanted to, but I think for video's sake, I'm just going to reinforce some black here. Pick up a little few details. Not color the whole thing in, but just kind of pull out this black border, which helps kind of frame the composition in as well. So if you don't have paper like this, which you probably won't, just draw a frame in. So I'm just popping that a little bit, maybe pop this. And then just taking up a few of the details and coloring them in black. So it stands out a little bit, it competes a little bit more with this colors and designs that we've picked. Just going along here. Not very straight because I'm going against my wrist right now. Okay, so it pops in the dark. So I think I really like this line, so I think I'm going to play with it some more. I think what we'll do is put one along the stem. Of where our color transition is. Around this leaf here, for example. Pop it back up here. And again, it has that kind of implied line feel to it where your brain just visually connects this black line going through. Just kind of make it a little bit neater, maybe. And then I'm going to bring it down here. else do we want to do? So I've got this textured pattern here. I think I want to introduce it somewhere over here. So maybe we'll put it in this circle. Let's try it. So I'm going to reintroduce the pattern by just creating the same lines, but within that circle. And again, just making this up. And that's the beauty of playing these sorts of experiments. I'm just going to fill in that whole circle. And where the circle crosses over, I think I'm going to leave. So I'm going to darken it so it shows up a little bit more. Darken this edge of the leaf just a little so it's a little bit more noticeable. And then because I've got these nice dark lines, I'm going to add it to this circle. A look, see what we think. Does it need more? Yeah, let me 
know what you think about these kind of sketches. Do you like doing them? Do you find them therapeutic, relaxing, stressful? Do you find you learn things from doing them? I'm just gonna darken some of these seeds here. Just scribble a little bit more. Okay, so I got the texture there. I feel like I need to put it somewhere else. So maybe I'll put some over here. All right. I like that. I think that's kind of fun. I think it's pretty, it's got some nice balance to it. I think it'd be kind of fun to add this texture in this square, just for something very different. Should we do it? Let's try it. challenging with this big fat marker but again I don't want the video to be hours long so I would definitely recommend any small section details like this that you would use your pen a little more fine tip I would use my sharpie but I don't know where I put it Kind of fun. Clean out the edge a little. Making sure my circles are circles. <laughs> Not the neatest circles. And these circles are more subdued, so you can see these ones look much brighter and these ones are much darker, and that's because the color of the watercolor behind is darker. And there's also writing in these when this is a bright green with no writing, so you can see the impact it has in, um, in this uh, overall drawing. So I think I'm going to fill this one in and make this bar a little shorter and introduce the pattern again. I'm kind of liking the whole squareness of it compared to the round over here. Oops way too fat. All right. So I lost some circles in there, but that's all right. We can clean that up. So I could add some white dots to this. That could be kind of fun. I got my Posca pen here somewhere. I got this guy. These are these Posca pens. I think they're acrylic. I'm gonna say they're acrylic paint markers, but don't quote me on that. And we can add another texture in. So they seem to dissolve right over that marker. Hmm. Which I didn't think they would. But I guess there's alcohol in this marker, maybe. Exiline, which I guess, um, what's the word I'm thinking of, kind of evaporates. So we'll give it a minute to evaporate. And we'll go to the dried here. 
hopefully this paint marker will sit on top. Whole other texture contrast here. That's really nice. At least I think so. <laughs> Just do some dots. I'm trying to go straight up and down so they're round so my fingers are going to be in the way. Sorry. Kind of fun about these Posca markers, especially the white, is it can really bring back some brightness to a drawing because the white sits right on top again. I treated myself to these markers. They're not cheap, but they are a lot of fun. So we'll see if that has evaporated, which it has. So now I can put my it's still, still absorbing in, so it might take a few more minutes. It's fun just to experiment, see what will happen. Same thing, it needs a little longer to uh, evaporate and dry out. I think I want to add a little bit, just make sure I don't smudge anything. A few more lines in here. Bring that texture through a little more. Maybe add a little bit of white to the stems of these. Just bring them back a little. So the stem goes up here. Just a little something. Kind of like that. The way it is now. Maybe. Maybe just something through this leaf here. Finish the top edge of that. And you can pop some darkness in the curve of some of these leaves. Make them stand out a little. Play with that. And I mean, you can just keep going and going. The circle here continues, so let's darken this. Let's actually finish that pattern through here. Do it now. Put this white texture back in. Playing with mediums is fun. Uh, you don't know how they're going to react to each other until you try it. Okay, I'm not sure how long this video has been already, but we'll start doodling the other side here, just for a comparison. <laughs> so you can either stay tuned or, or move on to another video of someone's. Um, but I want to I want to play with this as well. So I'm going to move this over a little bit just so I can reach it. I'm going to play with this line here from the textured paper to the blank paper. So again, pretty graphic, straight, and hard lines. Just play with that. I really enjoyed this kind of implied line here, so maybe we can play with that some too. Now there's not there's no curves in this paper except right here and right here. But that doesn't mean we can't put them in. Maybe we'll do something really dramatic on this one. And we'll do the negative space really dark. Let's let's try it. 
I'm going to do a big section now of that texture. See what that does. So I'm just going to pre-draw some circles. Because this marker's so fat. And then we'll color it in. Okay, let's go for it. So in this case, if we do that much of it, we could turn the background that we're coloring now into the positive space and the leaves more of a negative space feel. Let's see. Let's see if we can do it. Again, I would do this with a pen. If I had more time on the video. There's really only one way to find out if you're going to like it or not, and that is just to do it. Just be bold and go for it. Try not to focus too much on the end result and more on the process. Okay, that's kind of fun. I'm liking that. I need to make these more circle, circular. So we've introduced this bold pattern. So we'll have to do it elsewhere. And I think I want to do it in here. I hope my hand's not in the way too much. coloring in those seed pods, just coloring in between them. I fill in the lines in the background. And just bring it right out to this line we drew. Two very different looks. I think what we'll do is do it down here as well. Piece. I'm just gonna follow this line here. I don't know if I want to go up in here yet. I'm gonna go over to stay here for now. And again, I can always change my mind. Cover that border because it's kind of fun.
And I'll just finish this then and we'll have a look and see what we think. Maybe we've done too much, maybe I haven't done enough. And look at the overall picture and decide. what we want to do next. I know that these are not very nice circles. So I feel like something needs to go in here for sure. So I think I'm going to continue in here as well. In between here. really push that space forward. I think we'll make this circle stand out. Got some really fun textures going through it with the paper. Okay. I like it. I don't think I want to put it up here. Not yet, anyways. Maybe around these circles just leave the circles, but I don't want to decide that yet. I feel like we need to apply some in here. Just kind of break up that a little bit. Put some background space inside those seeds. All right. So what do we want to do now? Do we want to do the white dots on there? I really like how these come forward. I feel like these ones might be a little lost. Hmm. All right, we've decided. I'm gonna put it on this band here. And sometimes you can get stumped. You know, you can do this and and really not know what to do next. So just walk away from it for a minute. Come back to it, take your eyes off it. Have a visual break from it. <laughs> Terrible circles. <laughs> I feel like I'm rushing now though. This must be a pretty long video. If you're still with me. <laughs> okay. I think maybe what we'll do now, if it's evaporated enough, is give it another texture. So maybe we'll put white lines on this guy. I like it. Again, not perfect straight lines. So straight has never been my thing, that's for sure. Can't draw a straight line. Never could, and I probably never will. Kind of subdues that black a little bit so it's not so overpowering. But the texture's still there. And I could doodle for hours doing this. Leave that black halo around that circle that we originally drew. I 
And then you can have fun. You can go in the next section here of this pattern that we did and go horizontal if we want. So here, for example, we could go horizontal. Let's try it. Maybe skip some sections. My pen was leaking there. I'm not sure why it was leaking, but it was. All right, I am gonna rotate this though because I can't, I can't do it sideways. <laughs> All right, let's put them horizontal this way. In that little section, skip some. As you can see, none of my stuff's straight. If you want it straight, use a ruler or take your time. It'd be fun. You could put writing in this too if you had nice handwriting, which I do not. But that could be a fun element to add too. You could write a little message in here and some cursive writing would be really pretty. possibilities are just endless. I think I'm going to go this way here. broken lines on this one. Okay, let's move that back and have a look, see what we think. Okay, I definitely want it in here. Hopefully that's dry. Soften it in here. Well, I hope you're enjoying this video. I hope it gives you some inspiration on just having some fun with mediums. So in this case, we used watercolor paper for the base and then um, a printed book page for the um, base of the watercolor. And we used watercolor paper, uh, sorry, watercolor paints. And we used a black uniball pen and a Posca pen, which is dripped here. I don't know why that dripped everywhere, but it still looks cool. And uh, what else did we use? We used this waterproof, this isn't waterproof, sorry, um, just a cheapy permanent pen from the dollar store. And we created some really fun works of art. I think anyway, so bring you in a little closer, have a look. So we did more of a positive and negative feel and we did it approaching from two different styles. So drawing drawing first, painting first. And uh, they're very similar. It's just a question of what you prefer to control. Um, if, you, if you find you're kind of restricted on the watercolor, then maybe you, you want to draw it first so that you can gauge where your watercolor's going to go. If you're loose with your watercolor and willy-nilly and don't concern yourself with it, then start with the watercolor first. Um, so two very different looks. So in this case, we've pulled the background forward and created a, a stronger focal point and design element using the negative space in our design. 
and in this one the focal point is still the leaves we still see those but we have balanced out the the uh, overall composition by adding in these darker elements and more textures so this one's kind of more subdued when this is more graphic in my opinion anyways this one this one really pops in a way and this one's more subtle so just having fun experimenting and i hope you enjoyed it give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button share uh the idea and uh, you know if you decide to give it a go tag me in instagram i would love to see it and uh, i hope you enjoyed today's video everyone uh, take care bye